Okay. Now, again, yesterday, like I said, for some of you guys who are not here, I'll I'll try to review with you a little bit about uh, how to graph on a number line because it's important on the number line. Once you establish that you can do it on a number line, then writing it in interval notation is really simple. All right. So let's first, everybody, if you were to remember yesterday, graphing X is greater than five. For those of you guys who are not here, I know it's not that difficult. All right. We said yesterday, put down the answer and the opposite. And then greater than, there is no first number greater than five. So they had to come up with symbol then everything greater than five. So we put open circle at five, then we go to the what? We go to the right. And that was the answer. All right. Nothing to it. All right. Now, if you recall yesterday, I said, when I go to the right, I'm heading towards what? When I go to the right, I'm heading towards what? Yes, I'm heading towards infinity. And when I go to the left, I'm heading towards what? That is correct. I'm heading towards negative infinity. So now, please look at the interval notation. All right. Look how easy interval notation is. All right. Keep in mind, I'm asking you, you always read numbers from left to right. So if I'm looking at this, where do I start my solution at? I start at what? Five. And then I head off to where? That's correct. Look how easy the answer is now. It's just five to infinity. And I need parentheses around it. All right, now parentheses means you don't include it. Remember, infinity is an idea. Infinity is an idea. It's not a number. All right, so we say we can't really reach infinity. All right, that's why it's both open. Reading numbers left to right. All right, that's the interval notation. That's how simple this is. All right, so let's take a look now at question number two. All right, so on the number line, here we go. We start at negative four. Do we include negative four? Yes, we include negative four. Yes, you include negative four. And then yesterday I said write the opposite. So if you were graphing, it would be everything what? To the left. Everybody agree with that? Now, interval notation again. To the left, over here is what? And on the right is what? I said you read numbers from left to right. So as my answer, where am I going from? Negative infinity. That's right. You start at negative infinity. And you end when you get to what? Negative four. Now, the reason why this is a bracket, the reason why that's a bracket is because it's equal to. That's the difference. All right. So for those of you guys who are not sure, you can write yourself a note. This or this requires brackets. This and this involves parentheses. That's it. That's the rules. All right. You're going to use a bracket if you have less than or equal to or greater than or equal to. If it's just greater than or less than, it's parentheses. That's all there is to it. Yes, ma'am. So, you do like a bracket on both sides? No, I would have put a bracket on both sides. You never get to infinity. That's why it's a parenthesis. Do you hear me? That's the logic. Infinity, there's never an end. So, there can't be a bracket. Bracket means it ends. All right. So, now let's see if you understand what I'm talking about. Less than seven. All right, so those of you guys who need a number line, who can't think it through yet, seven is here, infinity is here, negative infinity is here. Less than seven, for those of you guys who were not here yesterday, is an open circle at seven going to the left. But we are doing interval notation now. So when we're reading numbers from left to right, that means I'm gonna write what first? Negative infinity, and then I go to where? seven, and then it is both parentheses, both parentheses. Yes, sir. Less than is to the left, isn't it? You agree with that or not? Less than is to the left, and then you read numbers from left to right when you're writing interval notation. All right, so now let's take a quick look at number four. 
greater than or equal to negative three. Now, try to write it without doing a number line. Try to write it without a number line. All right, I don't want you to use a number line. You use a number line when you can't visualize it very well. Eventually, your brain will just start to know what to write. So everyone should have written bracket negative three to infinity. That's what everybody should have written. You're starting at negative three and going where? To infinity. Negative three to infinity. Anybody have any questions? What? Why is that different? They're they're not different. What are you talking about? Like why is one bracket One's a bracket and one's a parenthesis. Is that what you're asking me? I don't know what that means. Like why is one like a box and the other one like a shape? That's just what I'm saying. I'm not understanding. Some of you guys are trying to be good students. Right, some of you are trying to be good students. So let me make sure I'm not messing things up here before I fuss. Or I said, when there's an equal to sign, we're gonna be using what? Brackets. We're gonna be using brackets. However, infinity and negative infinity, are they ever going to be brackets? No, they're always what? Parentheses. So back to this, let me make sure now you understand me. Because again, once you understand, it's just simple, simple, simple. I'm reading numbers from left to right. Do we agree with this? Here is negative three. Do I include negative three? Yeah. Because it's equal to. That's why there's a bracket here. That's why there's a bracket. I'm starting at negative three and heading where? To infinity. Does infinity require a bracket? I don't understand what you guys are asking me. Anthony, is that, did that clear it up? Yeah. AJ, did that clear it up? Mm -hmm. All right. Remember, it's just starting and stopping. Where did you start? Where did you end? That's what we're doing. All right, so now on number six, here we go. What do I need to do first? Subtracting two. Thank you, sir. And now everyone without a calculator, you should be able to tell me that just means greater than what? Negative three. Now, how do I get rid of one fourth? Multiply by four. Come on now. X is what? Greater than, don't forget the inequality sign, greater than negative 12. X is greater than negative 12. Anybody have any issues with X is greater than negative 12? So now in your mind, visualize where is negative 12 and I'm going greater than. So where am I starting? I'm starting at what number? I'm starting at what? Negative 12 and heading off to where? Positive infinity and I have what? Parentheses around everything. Anybody have any issues with that? Come on, what? So infinity you never imply. Yeah, infinity is never a bracket. Infinity is never a bracket. Okay, Yes, ma'am. Don't you change the sign? You change the sign when you multiply or divide by a negative. I multiplied by four. You with me? All right. That's a good question. All right, here we go. Number eight. I need to multiply by the what? Reciprocal. Now, look, I still had kids in the last class couldn't tell me, all right, what what eight times five fourths is? Now I cannot send you to high school not knowing what eight times five fourths is. You don't need a calculator for that. Multiplying by five fourths. Come on, guys. Divide first and then multiply. Do I change the inequality sign? No, because I didn't multiply by a negative. 
solve this. Eight divided by four, two times five. And don't forget it's negative 10. So X is greater than or equal to negative 10. So interval notation means I'm starting where? And I'm going where? On to infinity. What kind of bracket at? And parentheses at? Look at that. Anybody have any issues? Anybody have any issues? All right, here we go. Number 10, what do I have to do to both sides? Add five. Negative five sevenths V is less than what? Negative five, beautiful. Now, once again, I need to do the what? Reciprocal. All right, what is the reciprocal? All righty. Do I change the inequality sign? Yes. Yes, you do. Change the inequality sign because I'm multiplied by a negative for those of you guys who were not here yesterday. That's one rule that was confusing. Change it. V is greater than, come on now, five divided by five times seven. What is that? Is it positive or negative? So again, five divided by five is one. One times seven is seven. Final answer, seven. So V is greater than seven. So if V is greater than seven, where am I starting at? Going to greater than seven, right? So we're starting at seven, going to infinity. <clears throat> Anybody have any issues? Anybody? All right, here we go. I tried to throw in a decimal here. Don't let this confuse you. All right, we don't need a calculator for this. Now, if you just don't like decimals, everybody agree we could just move the decimal over one, right? So the three becomes a what? 30, thank you. Minus what? Is greater than negative 24, thank you. Now, what do I do to both sides? Add 18, come on. 30X is greater than negative six. So X is greater than Someone help me, please. Which is what? Say it. Yeah, don't forget the, yeah. Negative one fifth, please be careful with that. Negative one fifth. You guys are playing around. All right, I'm watching. All right. It's annoying. What's six divided by 30? You got $6 in your hand. Give it to the 30 of us. How much are we all going to get? Five? You see what I'm saying, right? That's how I learned it. Six. I got six bucks. Dividing it by 30 people. Because I'm, what am I dividing by? You look at it like a fraction. You see what I'm saying now, right? Look at it like a fraction. All right, so now greater than negative one fifth means I'm starting at what? And I'm heading where? That's not bad. All right, let's check out the next one.
Throw the X over. What does that become? Mm -hmm. Negative 8X is greater than or equal to negative 32. So now what? Divide by negative 8. So therefore, X is going to be what kind of 4? But what's the inequality sign? Change it so it becomes less than or equal to 4. Less than or equal to 4. Yes, sir. Whenever you multiply or divide by a negative, you change the inequality sign. All right. Whenever you multiply or divide by a negative, you change the inequality sign. So where am I starting now, guys, if I'm less than four? When you're less than, you start at negative infinity and you head to where? Four. What are my signs going? Bracket at where? Bracket at four. Never a bracket at infinity, ever. It's always parentheses. Everybody good with that? All right, let's keep going. 16. Now, do I need to distribute here or could I divide? Everybody, come on now. I want you a little bit more advanced now. When I send you to high school next year, I'd like for you to be able to look at that and say, just divide. It's easier. The problem becomes easier. If I divide by six, that's going to be less than or equal to what? Negative two. Let's go. Two X minus eight. Now what do I need to do? Add eight. So you should be able to write two X is less than or equal to what? Two X is less than or equal to what? Six. Now what? Divide by two, X less than or equal to three. Anybody have any questions with that? Blush. Anybody have any issues? So if I'm less than or equal to three, where am I starting? Negative infinity, and then I go all the way to what? Three, do I include three? Yes. Anybody have any issues? All right, let's continue on. All right, I'm going to pause the video. I want everybody to try this one and see how you're doing. All right, then write the final answer the negative two so i end up with negative six x minus 12 greater than or equal to three x minus 12. now subtract three if i subtract three that's going to give me negative nine x if i add 12 that's going to give me what zero when I divide by negative, what do I do to the inequality sign? So X is what? Less than or equal to zero divided by nine today is what? What? Yeah, zero. Zero divided by negative nine is still zero. So if I'm less than or equal to zero, that means I'm going from where? Negative infinity to what? With a bracket at zero. Anybody have any problem with that? All right, let's knock out 20. 20 should be kind of easy. What's five minus two plus eight? Come on, guys, come on. Let's, let's, let's get through this. We don't have much homework. So I have 11R is less than negative 77. So what does that mean? R is less than what? negative seven. So if I'm less than negative seven, that means I'm going from two. Dane, how am I doing? You good with this? You awake? 
A little bit. I appreciate just a little bit. All right. Anybody else? Anybody else? I'm in trouble with 20. All right, let's knock out 20. Uh-oh, come on now, 22, please. Let's go ahead and make, take care of the fraction. What am I going to multiply by? Yeah, multiply by the reciprocal. All right, I'm just going to get rid of this for a second so we can see it. Multiply by the reciprocal, that means I need eight fifths over here to cancel this out. Well, what's eight fifths times five? Eight. Eight less than or equal to X minus three. Now I have to do what to both sides? Add three. So eight plus three today is 11 is less than or equal to X. Is everybody good with that? Now, if 11 is less than or equal to X, when you rewrite it, all right, I want the variable first. So that means if 11 is less than or equal to X, that means X must have been what? Yes, thank you. Greater than or equal to 11. So how do I write greater than or equal to 11? 11 comma what? Positive infinity. And I need what? Bracket where? And there you have it. Everybody's good with that? Everybody's good? Anybody? All right. Now change that to greater than or equal to. I'm going to pause the video one more time, and I want everybody to try, see if you're doing good. When I distribute, I end up with negative 10 plus 4x minus 4 greater than or equal to 2. Now, when I combine terms, think about it. This negative 10 and this negative 4 makes what? Thank you. So I have 4x minus 14 is greater than or equal to 2. Add 14, 4x greater than or equal to 16. So x is greater than or equal to what? 4. So if x is greater than or equal to 4, I'm starting at what? And going to with a bracket at 4. Molly, what? Didn't you also have um, like with 94 and 3? Yeah, you could have. But that's not really helpful, you know what I mean? Because you still have a two right here. You know what I mean? All right, good job. All right, once again, 26. Multiply by the reciprocal. What's the reciprocal? Two thirds. So X plus two is greater than, what is that? Negative eight. And so my final answer is X is greater than which one subtracting two, right? Negative 10. So I'm starting at what? And I'm heading to where? Everybody's good with that. All right, let's distribute the two. Are we okay with that so far? Adding nine. So X is less than or equal to eight. Do we agree with that? And now use interval notation. So where do I start? Thank you. And I stop at what? Six. 
See if that makes sense. Oh, that's pretty nice, isn't it? Anybody have any question with 28? All right, I think we just have one more. All right, let's knock out 30 and be done. Well, I mean, still have the odds to do, but 2x plus 3x minus 18 less than or equal to negative 18. What's 2x plus 3x? Now, what happens to the two negative 18s? So now divide by what? Divide by 5, right? And then what's 0 divided by 5? So if I'm less than or equal to zero, where am I starting at? Negative what? Negative infinity to what? Zero, bracket at zero. Everybody's good? All right, now I, I, I was looking over some of your homework, guys, and some of you are writing incomplete stuff. You're not finishing up. You're being lazy. You're not writing out the work. All of a sudden you go from one step to the answer. I'm not sure even what that means. All right, I, I write all the work out, every single bit of it. That, that's what I'm expecting. All right, you can skip the steps that you can just do mental math on. I'm totally fine with that. But some of you are like magic. You're just like writing a step and then getting the answer. That's not working. All right, now finish up. All right, for homework, everything. I'm collecting it right when you walk in the door tomorrow. I have the uh, video posted for the odds. If you're having a little bit of trouble, I have the video posted for the evens.